I'm Steve Morgan, founder of Cybersecurity Ventures and editor-in-chief at Cybercrime Magazine. As part of our ongoing coverage on cybercrime and cybersecurity, we recently spoke to several top experts about how they see it. But before we check in with the CISOs, we caught up with James McQuiggan, security awareness advocate at Nobefore. As I look back over the last 15 plus years that I've been working in cybersecurity, one of the things that I did early on and that got me very excited when it came to cybersecurity was educating people. Back then, it was before ransomware really took off. We were dealing with third-party supply chain attacks. We had the target breach. We had OPM and Facebook and LinkedIn getting attacked as well. Since then, yes, we've seen improvements in those type of attacks, but now with cyber criminals going after the humans, they have always been at the front line. Every day we're hearing about new attacks on organizations because they're getting in through social engineering. And so it's critical that from the organization standpoint, and for me is getting the people educated making them those human firewalls, that last line of defense, so that they have that awareness and understanding. It took a long time for people to get used to wearing seatbelts in cars, but now everybody does it. When they get in, it's automatic. And that's what we're having to work towards. It's just going to probably take a full generation to get there. By 2025, global damage from cybercrime is expected to hit 10.5 trillion US dollars annually, according to Cybersecurity Ventures. This staggering statistic is a direct result of today's cyber threat landscape, which, with the introduction of new technologies such as the Internet of Things, artificial intelligence, and machine learning, has only grown more dire. Kathy Hughes, CISO at Northwell Health, told us that despite the ongoing challenge of remediating this threat, the outlook isn't all bad. It's getting more challenging. What has been very productive, I guess, or valuable is that it's not as far in a concept anymore to people as it was a decade ago. Back in the day, no one heard of cyber attacks or security and positions like mine didn't even exist. So it is relatively new. A recent article from Newsweek highlights just how much the threat landscape has changed in cyberspace over the years, saying that two decades ago, experts wrote off hacking as temporary growing pains of the nascent internet. Debbie Guild, former CISO and current head of enterprise technology and security at PNC, has seen firsthand just how wrong these experts were. I was preparing to do a presentation and I did some research on threat intelligence and I was like, you know, what what existed before the FBI? Like, where did we get some of this information, you know, back in the day? But threat intelligence started in the 1890s with Pinkerton and they were looking for the old stagecoach robbers and that was their threat intelligence back in the day. Believe it or not, we still have bank robberies going on today. So I now have to make sure that I am looking out for not only the, literally, the bank robbers of the 1890s, but I also have to worry about distributed denial of service attacks. I have to worry about botnets. I have to worry about the internet of things. I have to think about any number of threats that can come from even good things like 5G. So you see some things change dramatically, but the motives stay the same. The threat objectives are still the same. Cybersecurity Ventures predicts that by 2030, 90% of the human population, aged six years and older, will be online. And if street crime grows in relation to population growth, so will cybercrime. Data breaches are merely the tip of the iceberg for today's sophisticated hackers, according to Alyssa Abdullah, AKA Dr. J, Deputy CSO and Senior VP of Emerging Corporate Security Solutions at MasterCard. Everyone has a digital footprint. If you've been breached by a credit reporting agency, if you've been breached by a bank, if you've been breached by retail, your information is on the dark web. So they learn about you. They know your mother's maiden name, they know your favorite color, they know your car. They use all of that information, not just to answer your secret questions, but they know that information say, hey, we went to high school together. We went to college together. That's the difference between five, 10 years ago to now. Five or 10 years ago, it was a quick game. It was, let me get what I need to get right now, right now. Let me see what I can get. That's what the adversary was thinking. Now they're playing the waiting game. That's how sophisticated the adversary is. To address the question of how consumers can protect themselves from today's relentless cyber threats, we turn to Liz Joyce, former SVP and Chief Security Officer at Hewlett Packard Enterprise. It's not necessarily any one threat to to me personally. I think it's all about the pace of change. There's been the pace of change in technology. So we've gone from having sort of monolithic data centers to Wi-Fi and networks and cloud, and now everybody's talking AI and so forth. So there's just been such a broad spectrum of technology change, and you have to keep up with that. And when it's immature, 
it may be harder to defend. But then as it matures, that's going to get leveraged. So you have to understand how you can leverage the technology in order to better do your job. But additionally, you have to also recognize that the attackers are going to be trying to use the same technology against you. So it's that continuous evolution, continuous change. It's trying to keep up on all those different areas. I think that's the, the biggest issue. For more information on cybercrime and cybersecurity, including the latest facts, figures, and statistics which convey the magnitude of the threat we're up against, visit us at cybersecurityventures.com. This special production is sponsored by Know Before, the world's first and largest new school security awareness training and simulated phishing provider that helps you manage the ongoing problem of social engineering. To learn more about our sponsor, Know Before, visit knowbefore.com.